Welcome again twirlers worldwide to another video in my series of Photoshop for twirlers. I was asked by a fellow twirler, uh, Jan Fox, if I could show a little on how to blend images with twirls. So here it is Jan, just for you. So don't show it to anyone else. Ok, ok, let's start. Ok, let's have a look what we've got here. We've got, we've got a twirl that I've finished and I want to do a little bit of blending with an image. And here I've got an image that I'd like to blend. Now this one has got a nice white background and it's always easier if you have. Because we've got to cut this out. And what I not like is, is a nice sharp edge for some of the selection tools to lock onto. We'll have a little bit of a, a problem with the hair, but we can always deal with that with what they call refine edge. But first to do that, to start blending, blending is is basically blending one layer with another. Well here we've got two separate images so I need to get these images together in layers. So with the this image open I'm going to go and select my move tool and I'm going to go into the image and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drag it right over the, area, the image I want to put it in and wait for a second until that image appears. Keep your finger on the mouse button you've not let go of you. Good and drag it back and then let go and that will now create you that image on a second layer and you've still got the move tool so I can go in there and I can just drag that around and position it where I want to position it. Right now we, we could try blending straight away because we've got a lovely white background and there is a blend mode that can't see white it basically makes it invisible so if this works then it cuts, you don't have to cut anything out, it makes it a lot simpler. And that, the blend modes are here where it says normal in the layers panel. If we click on that then we've got a lot of blending modes. Now the one that can't see white is called multiply. So if I click on that one you'll see all the white just disappears. But of course all the light tones in the image disappear as well because what this is doing is just showing us the darker tones. So if I click and drag that around now, you'll see that if I put it over anything lighter, it shows the image, which is great if that's what you want to do. But if you need the image to be in the middle, then it's not really a lot of good for you. There are lots of other blend modes, you can experiment with those, but the basically the darkened ones give you something that's too dark, and the lightened ones give you something, it brings back the white again. So. If that's not going to not going to work, then what we can do is we'll we'll go back to normal, and we'll look at cutting out this image. So we'll, we'll do an extraction. So to do that, we're going to use a selection tool, and the selection tool of choice for this, for me, is over here, and it's called the quick selection tool. Or you can press W on the keyboard, and it's it's grouped together with the magic wand tool, and I'm going to just click. And then I'm going to make my mouse a little bit smaller and I'm going to click and drag. You don't draw with this tool, you encourage it to find an edge. So I'm just going to click in here and drag it around a bit. And because I've got some nice contrast across this edge, it finds it. It's like a magnet, it just magnetizes. Okay, some of the hair is not good, but we can make that a little bit better. And we're going to do that with the refine edge. And on any selection tool that we've selected now, what you've got is this Refine Edge button. So I'm going to click on that. And what it'll do up here in the View mode, if you make sure that you are on Layers is selected, then what it'll do is it'll show you the layer behind the cutout. So it gives you an idea of what you're doing. Now here we've got a lovely cutout round the shoulder and down here, but it's a little bit ratty round the head. So we can do a little bit about that. So in edge detection, we're going to go and switch on smart radius. And we're going to pull that radius slider up a little bit and it will, it'll help. It won't correct it, but it'll help it a little bit. So I'm going to pull it up to about four pixels. And then here we've got what's called the refine radius tool. And I'm going to pick the refine radius tool, the top one. Let me mouse a little bit bigger and then I'm just going to paint round the edge of the hair 
And what I'm doing is I'm telling Photoshop now to extend the area that it searches for hair. And when I let go, you'll see it'll pull back in some of these strands of hair. Just do it a little bit further out. There we go. Now we have got some little edge pixels, some white pixels on the edge of these hairs, because that's always going to happen. But down in the output section here, we've got a little box which Adobe put in called Decontaminate Colors. And if I click on that, what this is going to do now with this amount slider, it's going to look at these, these little stray pixels. And if it thinks that there should be hair, it's going to fill them with the hair color. So if I now just pull that over, you should see that that, if I do it from there to there, you'll see the edge of that hair gets pretty good now. And that's an amazing cutout. It's a really, really cool tool that Refine Edge. Right, finally, output to. Well, I'm going to output it to a new layer with a layer mask. So I'm going to click OK. And in the layers panel now, you can see I've got a layer with a layer mask on. All done. I've also got a layer underneath, which is the original layer. Now, Refine Edge has switched it off, but now, because I've got a duplicate, I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to click on that layer and drag that in the bin. And there it was, gone. So now I've got a decent cutout of this young man, and I'm going to now try and blend him. So again, we can go through the blend modes and see if anything comes up that we like, but we have to be on the layer, the top layer, the one where we want to blend. And then we'll look at, say, the, ooh, let's try, well, let's try multiply again. No, that's a bit dark. Let's try screen. Screen's not bad. That's not bad. You can now, once you've got a blend mode that you like, you can try the opacity. And you can drop the opacity just to blend him in even more if that's what you need. Okay. Now, it would be nice if he was basically blended in with the colours a bit better. Um, so I'm going to try and give him a bit of a colour wash. And we're going to do that with a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to go down to hue and saturation and click on it. And that's going to bring up a hue and saturation layer. But at the moment, if I change any of the colors, it's going to change the colors all the way down through the stack right to the bottom. So what I want to do now is just clip these two together. I'm going to do that with what's called a clipping mask. We do that by, if I hold the Alt key down and hover over this line between these two, you, you get that little symbol with a bent arrow. And if I click, what that'll do is that indents that mask and it puts this little arrow on. And what that's saying is that these two layers are clipped together now. So anything I do, it'll only happen to this layer here, which is what I want. So here we've got in the Properties panel, the Hue and Saturation. I'm going to go down and click Colorize because I'd like to put a colour on. But obviously it defaults to like a red colour and I don't want that. I want a blue colour. So I'm going to slide the slider until I get a nice bit of blue. Probably somewhere, somewhere there. I can play with the saturation if I want. That's pretty good as well. Oh, I'm quite liking where this is coming from. Okay. I can close that down now. And if I still want him to blend a little bit more, I can go back to his layer again. And I can change the opacity. I'll just try the opacity and just blend that in a little bit with my super duper twirl. Now, this isn't going to be as easy for every image. I've deliberately picked that one with a white background just to show you that it can be quite easy if you pick the right image. But let's have a look with a little bit more of a complex one. So I'm going to throw these bits in the bin because I don't need them. And I'm going to have a look at this image. Now this image obviously hasn't got a white background. But what you'll have to do is develop your selection skills to be able to make a good selection. Now again, I'm going to try the quick selection tool. Because I can see that there is, there is a definite delineation here. So I'm going to click and drag inside this first coffee cup. 
and I'm just going to move around and hopefully try and get a little bit round there. OK, that's good. Now, obviously, I've not got my little spoon, but that's more of an advanced thing that you can. You, you've basically got to add that to the selection. But what you can do, you can get the majority of that selected. Now, if I wanted to select that, what I can do is I make my mouse really, really small. I'll zoom in. And I need to be in Add to Selection mode. So up here on the Tools Options bar here, you can see there's a plus. I need to make sure that is selected. Make that a little bit smaller. And then I'm just trying to add that spoon to the selection. Now, if it goes wrong, and basically it does quite often, where you go, you get a bit too much, and you go, oh, I've selected, because all these tones are very similar. And it just goes along and selects what it thinks is right. Then what we can do is we can hold the Alt key down and you'll see the little symbol inside the mouse turns to a minus. And this is subtract from selection. So I'm just going to go and try and get back to where I need to be. So I'm just going to subtract all that. And I'm just going to nibble away at that little bit. I've got a little bit too much again now. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down and try and nibble at this bit. It is quite memory intensive this, so it may just take a minute to render. And then just nip these. And in this case, I'll say that's good enough. If I'll zoom out a little bit. Control and minus to zoom out. And I've got what is a decent selection. So again, we'll go and we'll say we're going to use Refine Edge again. Go to Refine Edge. We've got that. Doesn't matter what it's set to. It's a little bit of a ratty edge. So we'll use Smart Radius again. Put a little bit of a radius on it. But this time we'll shift the edge of this by using the Shift Edge slider. And what we're doing is we're pulling the edge in. So you see, if I pull it right in, it basically makes the cups a little bit smaller. It just drags the selection edge in a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of feather, which is a little bit of softening to the edges. Um, decontaminate colours we can try. Might just give us a little bit if there's any edge pixels, but it normally works better off with hair, that. And then output. We'll output it. And it will bring it in as a basically a layer with a layer mask. Now I need to get that into my original image. How do we do that with the first one? Well, we use the Move tool. I'm going to click on the Move tool. I'm going to come back into the image, not the layer. I'm going to come back into the image, click and drag it. Keep my finger on that mouse button and then let go. Now this image is quite big, so I'm going to have to transform it. So I'm going to control and minus a couple of times, control and T, and it's still quite massive. So I'll try and find a corner. I'll hold the shift key down because I want to transform it in proportion. I don't want my cups getting all squishy. And then we'll drag it up a bit until I get it the right size. There we go. That's probably not looking bad. And I'll just double click to accept that. Control and plus just to zoom out a little bit to have a look at it. And that's not bad. Uh, OK, I've lost a bit of this edge here. I've just noticed that. But you can see what I mean. You, you need to be able to, to make your initial selection pretty good. And then same again, if we wanted to add a little bit of colour to this, then we'll go and make a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we'll clip it to the coffee cup layer. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down and click on that join between them. I'm going to click colorize again. It's like we did in the first one. And then I'm going to pick a color and we'll try with the blue again. And when you've done that, we can mess with the opacity. So I need to click on the layer 
that's got the pixels on, which is the coffee cup layer, and now drop the opacity. And uh, yeah, you'll see there's some of the twirls will start coming through the coffee cups. Well, that's it, Jan the Twirler. How to blend images with your twirls. I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn more about Photoshop, please visit my website, kenfisherphotography.com, or my YouTube channel, Live Link Training. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.